Hey, and welcome back to Caleb's Corner, and today we are looking at the Marvel Legends 60 Years of Spider-Man Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man figure. Now, I have been super excited about this figure since they announced it with the new body sculpt, the first appearance Steve Ditko design of the costume, which is one of my personal favorite all-time looks for Spider-Man. I adore the Steve Ditko era of this costume. I was super excited about this figure, so when it finally came out, I could not have been more ecstatic to receive it in the mail, and quite frankly, it was really hard not to just rip it out of the package the second I got it in, but I wanted to do this review for you guys, so I, I held off and I waited, but here we are. I could not be more excited to get this guy out of the package. But first, let's talk about the box. The packaging is windowless, as we've seen with a lot of the current figures, especially like the VHS line um, and the new Black Panther wave for Wakanda Forever. All that's windowless, and I think going forward, we'll be seeing a lot more of this. But as for the front of the package, you'll see Spider-Man posed, which isn't an awful pose. Um, on the side of the packaging, we'll see a much more static posed figure. I don't think this is an actual figure. I believe this is just to be a render. On the back, you get this really awkward bent leg uh, image of Spider-Man with the, almost what looks like to be a hyperextended arm. It's a really awkward pose. I don't know who is doing the poses for the back of these boxes, but it really could benefit from having a much more dynamic pose that really shows off the figure itself versus this really awkward um whatever this is. And on the other side of the packaging, you'll see the ever-gorgeous cover art of Amazing Fantasy 15 by Steve Ditko. And that's enough about the packaging. Let's go ahead and open him up and get Spider-Man out on the stand. And here he is out of the box, and I have to say, upon first impressions, he is absolutely gorgeous. I am absolutely loving this new body mold. I love the more slender, shorter Spider-Man physique, much more reminiscent of the uh, Amazing Fantasy 15 appearance of Spider-Man. As he's still in high school, he's 15, so he's not as tall as he will be later, not as broad. But I absolutely love this new body mold. So let's go ahead and take a look at accessories, and he is chock full of them. Alright, for accessories, we have four sets of hands. We have fisted hands, gripping hands, wall crawling hands, and thwipping hands. He will also come with a set of collapsed web wings, the long web line, which is a nice addition, and then the extended web wings as well. And this is the amount of accessories we should be getting with our figures. I'm so happy to see we've got so many here. But let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a look at the articulation for this brand new body mold. Alright, so starting with the head here, because we have this neck hinge on the neck and the ball peg up in the skull of Spider-Man here, he will be looking all the way up, which is gorgeous. I love to see this. You can get some great wall crawling poses out of this with this, and he can look all the way down as well, which is great. And then he can shift his head forward and shift it backward because of the way that neck hinge works with that ball joint. It is Oh, so good. Uh, the shoulders will be going up to a 90 degree angle, uh, which is great. And you can get the full rotation out of that shoulder socket. You get the uh, bicep hinge, which will go all the way around. You get a double jointed elbow. And just look at this. This is just goes to show that Hasbro can make gorgeous double jointed elbows. Look how far that goes. He is touching his own shoulder. It's just, I don't understand why we get this gorgeous double jointed elbow here. And sometimes we get nothing anywhere close to this. It's just fantastic. And as you can see, there's pinless joints on the arms as well as the legs here, which look great in the Spider-Man costume. And then you get no forearm uh, swivel. You will get the wrist to go all the way around and you can pivot them going down and pivot them going up as well. And while most of the hands will pivot that way, the web gripping hands, as you can see, will pivot this way on that axis instead, which is gorgeous. I love that they included this kind of articulation on this specific set of hands. And I really, really, really hope that we continue to see this kind of articulation for gripping hands with other characters, not just Spider-Man. Now for the butterfly joints, he will crunch forward this far and go backwards about that far, which isn't a lot of movement out of these butterfly joints. Symbiote Spider-Man, I believe, has better butterfly joints in terms of uh, range of motion, but there are pins in there that are inhibiting the shoulder joints where the shoulders pin into the torso of Spider-Man uh, that do inhibit the butterfly joint movement. And there is modifications you can make where you can warm him up in water and then pull those out and clip the excess plastic to go ahead and free up that butterfly joint more. I will probably go ahead and do this on this figure here, and if I do, I will go ahead and make a video about that showing you how to do that. Uh, but you are getting a limited articulation of those butterfly joints because of that excess plastic that is inside of the torso here. Now, as for the diaphragm ball peg that sits in here, uh, he will go forward about uh, this far, which isn't a whole lot forward at all, and then he'll go backwards about 
uh, this far, which honestly the diaphragm joint is really lacking. Uh, but when you put that together with the ab crunch here and you crunch both the diaphragm and the ab crunch forward, you get quite a ways bent forward for Spider-Man. And then same going backwards. It's when you apply both the ab crunch and the diaphragm joint that you get a lot of movement. I just think the diaphragm joint is a little bit lacking. It's just a tad too tight in there. And then you can also use that ball joint to get some side to side play. And you actually do get a fair amount left to right with that ball joint. And you also can get a lot of nuance in almost any direction, which helps a lot with your poses looking a little more lifelike, which is much appreciated. As for the legs, you can get actually past 90 uh, if you are okay with him kicking out to the side just a little bit. If you want to say, uh, strict with the up and down leg movement here. You will get a little bit past 90, maybe like 93 degrees here. As for going back, he will go about that far, which isn't too bad. You do get your upper thigh cut, and you do get double jointed knees, and again, the double jointed knee is gorgeous. Goes all the way back. He's kicking himself in the butt. It is awesome. I love this new body mold, and it just looks fantastic with those pinless joints. Uh, you do get a thigh cut here, and on this thigh cut on this side, it is a little bit gappy. It's a little bit more loose than the other side, which is something I noticed. Not the end of the world, but I wanted to point it out. And then for the legs here, uh, his feet will pin back about that far. It will go forward about that far. And you also get an ankle rocker, which is actually seated at the top of the boot here. Uh, so that's where it's going to pivot around, but there is an ankle rocker there. And with the ball joint up in the head, you do get a decent amount of side to side. And for the web wings with our Amazing Fantasy 15 Spider-Man, they peg into the back of the arms here, and I notice it helps if you rotate that shoulder forward as well. But right there is that peg. You can see it's on both sides of Spider-Man's arms. And all we have to do is take the web wings with this peg and just peg it into the hole on his arms here, which if you just bend his arm just a little bit back and line that up, you can peg it in there for the extended wings, and it looks really good. Um, I honestly really love the wings. It doesn't look as great from the back because it does wrap around his uh, lats here. But from the front, it gets the job done. It looks great. Just don't spend too much time looking at it from the rear because you will get that overlap. And then if you put both sides in for the extended wings, uh, you can see what I'm talking about a little more clearly. From the front, it looks absolutely spectacular. I love this inclusion of accessory. Um, but from the back here, it does overlap. A little bit weird. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it looks fantastic from the front. I absolutely love the web wing accessories. The Steve Ditko classic art style really brings it to life. I I absolutely adore this inclusion here. He just looks, oh, it just looks so good. It's like I just ripped him out of the comic book. Um, and then for the other web wing, which is a collapsed web wing, so when Spider-Man's arms are by his side, you can include that one uh, into the back of his arm. So if we just swap these out here and tuck his arm down, there we go. Uh, you can see what it looks like next to each other. Uh, it doesn't look great from all angles, uh, so if you push his arms back down, uh, it's a little bit loose. As you can see, it fell out as I pushed his arms down a little bit further. But if you can peg it in there and get it to seat right, there we go. Uh, it looks great. Uh, so there's the side-by-side -side between the extended and the collapsed web wing. But I'm absolutely in love with this new body mold that they're using for Amazing Fantasy 15 Spider-Man. You can get some insane dynamic poses. I'm talking Todd McFarlane, like elbow way far back and his knee up by his head level of dynamic crazy poses out of this guy. He's great. He's such like a fantastic figure too. I'm really loving this new sculpt we're getting here. I really hope they continue to use this sculpt. Uh, as for paint on this figure, I did have a couple of issues um, pretty much immediately out of the package. Um, I posed them up a little and threw them onto a flight stand I had and I scuffed the abdomen area. You can see a white dot. Um, it actually got bigger um, later on after I filled the review I posed some more. Um, it is frustrating. It's not like the biggest scratch in the world and I could in theory go through and fix it myself. But it is annoying that I immediately scuffed paint off of this figure right out of the package despite the increased prices Hasbro is charging for these figures. I would have expected a more durable finish. And you could make the argument that it is user error because I put them on a flight stand. However, like who isn't putting these Spider-Man figures on flight stands in the first place? I expected a little more durable finish. And then additionally on the back of the figure I have some gapping in the paint on the belt area and then on some of the alternate hands as well I have some gapping on the web lines uh, it's not the worst thing in the world you can kind of see right here on the finger uh, there is just like no web line it just stops and there's a gap in the dot um, 
and there's an extra web line on the top of the hand as well. So it's a little bit messy. It's not the end of the world as far as quality control issues go, especially with recent uh, Marvel Legends figures from Hasbro. And something I noted on the back of the packaging here, in the armpit Spider-Man has here, you do see a black hinge joint for his shoulder. Uh, the actual figure is red, so it is a bit frustrating. It doesn't get that nice, smooth transition uh, with the rest of the black on that side of the figure going under the arm into the side of the body, uh, which is a bit annoying. Uh, you, you lose that fluidity um, of the costume silhouette, though, like I've said in previous reviews, I could do it myself. It's not super hard, but we shouldn't have to, again, especially with increased prices from Hasbro and they keep going up. Uh, but other than those issues, this is honestly probably the best painted Marvel Legends figure I've gotten in recent memory, if not my entire collection. It's gorgeous. It's super clean. Issues are minimal, and I've just had an absolute blast posing it and putting it up on the shelf the rest of the collection. I love the first appearance look of Spider-Man from Amazing Fantasy 15. The Steve Ditko look is my favorite. Uh, it's gorgeous. I love it. It looked like I ripped it just off of the comic book, except for, like, of course, the extra like cell shading that those comics had. I love that like squinty look in the lenses that Steve Ditko and then later Alex Ross would do in his art. I love the large spider uh, emblem on the front of the chest. I love the slender build. Um, he looks fantastic. I love this figure so much. If I had to point out um, one more th issue, I suppose, um, I'm only noticing it now under Studio Light. I didn't notice this while messing with it previously, but the red on the chest and abdomen of the figure is a little bit different than on the arms and legs. I just b believe that's because of uh, the softer plastic used for the arms and legs versus the harder plastic used for the chest and abdomen. Um, I didn't notice that previously, but only while filming did I just actually notice that under my harsher studio light setup. But in natural lighting, he looks great. You're not going to notice that difference in red. Now, as for final thoughts on this first appearance Spider-Man Marvel Legends figure, I think he is fantastic. He is decked out with accessories here. He has four sets of hands, plus the web line, plus the two sets of web wings. He is decked out when it comes to accessories. As for its sculpt, the new sculpt is fantastic. It's one of the best sculpts that they've released in recent memory. The articulation is off the charts. The poses I've been able to get out of this figure have been insane, especially from a domestic figure. He poses like he is an import figure and sometimes even better, I would say. Uh, he's just gorgeous. The quality control issues were minimal, uh, other than maybe a more durable finish would have been nice and some more cleanliness on some of the web lines on the alternate hands, but those are minimal issues over Overall, especially compared to some of the issues we've seen with Marvel Legends in recent history. Uh, we're looking at you, VHS Wolverine, oh my gosh. Um, but he is just fantastic, and I think this amount of accessories should also become standard among Marvel Legends figures, especially as they keep increasing prices. And I know I've talked about that a lot, but they keep increasing prices, so we're going to keep talking about it until they stop. It's part of my job as a reviewer here. Uh, but he is such an amazing figure. Uh, there's not much I have to like really complain about. Uh, there's not a lot really holding this figure back. Uh, he is fantastic. He is a must-have in the collection. He is my quintessential Spider-Man. I will probably even buy a second figure to customize and turn him into a red and blue suit Spider-Man, and maybe even a third to customize more. Like I, This figure makes me want to customize figures. I want to get a couple of these guys and play around with the, the sculpt and play around with the articulation and play around with the paint jobs. Like I love this figure, and I cannot recommend him enough. So, final verdict on the Marvel Legends first appearance Spider-Man. Spider-Man here, Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. I'm going to give him a well-deserved 9 out of 10. The only thing really holding him back would be the small QC issues I've noticed, but more particularly the finish on the figure not being particularly durable uh, and having scratched it immediately out of the box was a bit of a bummer when I was first uh, getting him out and playing with him. Uh, but yeah, 9 out of 10, easily well-deserved. Go pick up this figure. I cannot recommend him enough to you. He is absolutely stunning. As always, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you have this figure, I would love to hear your thoughts on him down below. If you agreed or disagreed with anything I said, if you liked the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe. If you want to see more content like this, I will be making plenty more figure reviews in the future. And as always, I will see you next time here at Caleb's Corner.